Hello, my name is Andrea Abreu. I'm assistant professor of clinical urology and radiology at USC, University of Southern California in Los Angeles, California. Thank you for the opportunity to talk to you about emerging data and clinical utility of HIFU phototherapy and in prostate cancer. There are currently several technologies and energy modalities available for prostatic tissue ablation. I will focus on HIFU applied transvectally. HIFU stands for high intensity focus ultrasound. That means it's an ultrasound energy that it is delivered to a focal point uh, with high energy or high intensity. Within this focal point, the temperature rise to more than 80 degrees Celsius, causing thermal effect, mechanical effect, and tissue effect that will ultimately lead to uh, tissue coagulative necrosis and death. So these findings um, can be seen on uh, ultrasound with contrast and MRIs, and they correlate with the histology. In this patient here that was treated in the right side of the prostate, follow-up biopsy or surveillance biopsy showed only fibrosis. Uh, as opposed to the other side that was not treated, it showed actually uh, prostatic, regular prostatic tissue. HIFU is applied transvectally. Uh, as you can see here, the probe is transvectal. This is the prostate, and it's ablating the right lobe of the prostate. So what are the outcomes of HIFU? Firstly, I would like to emphasize that HIFU has been applied for a long time in Europe and Asia since 1996 uh, with a report of such largely, uh, large cohorts of 700, 900, and 1,000 patients with a medium term follow-up of five years, 6.5 years for patients with low intermediate and high risk prostate cancer. Uh, and the outcomes of the whole gland HIFU ablation oncologically, they are quite encouraging. Cancer-specific survival in 10 years is 90-90%. Overall survival, 80%. As you can see here, these results are uh, also duplicated in a, a Japanese cohort. So these are actually, uh, these results in terms of oncological outcomes are comparable to other series of radical prostatectomy specimen uh, of radical prostatectomy, as you can see here. Uh, also comparable to radical treatment is the uh, potency rate after whole gland HIFU. So about 50% of the patients will be potent after whole gland HIFU ablation, which is very similar to those undergoing radiation therapy or radical prostatectomy, as you can see here, how their section function decline as well. So what, are, what we are currently uh, uh, um, looking for or searching and, and trying to achieve in terms of prostate cancer treatment is a balance on quality of life and quantity of life, quality of life and longevity. Um, this rationale is not new, and for this we are talking now in terms of focal therapy, which has been applied for uh, several other organs, including breast, renal, thyroid, liver, and other organs. Uh, the goals of focal therapy for prostate cancer is to selectively ablate the disease that we know that exists, preserving function, minimizing mobility without compromised life expectancy. Um, I separated here two um, systematic reviews that analyzed the manuscripts published up to 2015 and the other one manuscript published from 2017 to 2019. So in the initial series, we see that they analyzed 37 studies with 2,900 patients, most of them undergoing cryoablation from the cryo registry. Most recently, they published 24 manuscripts on 3,800 patients. And then now what we see is increasing number of patients undergoing high full with um, 2,300 patients undergoing HIFU and less patients undergoing cryoablation, but we also see other modalities uh, increasing. Uh, this is not only on research, it's not only patients treated, but also what the uh, population or what the, the people uh, search online on Google. What do you see here on this yellow graph? Um, uh, Google search for focal therapy in comparison to radical prostatectomy you see how focal therapy is increasing. Um, so what are the outcomes? So firstly, for, for uh, HIFU was applied as a focal therapy, uh, initially as a safety and feasibility, and the cohorts were kind of small, 20, 40, uh, 70 patients 
for mostly low to intermediate risk patients. Although we can't draw so much conclusions in terms of oncological outcomes for these manuscripts, we, ought, we can uh, certainly say is that high full focal therapy is uh, safe because it has uh, very low serious adverse events, about 3%. Uh, and the functional outcomes are excellent. Continency 93 to 100%, potency 80 to 95%. Fistula, which is a devastating uh, uh, complication, is uncommon or, or even rare, as we will show on the following manuscripts as well. So uh, with this, there was a, a lot of critique um, in terms of focal therapy that uh, these patients treated initially, they were not supposed to be treated because they were candidate for active surveillance. So with this, uh, what we observed is that the physicians and patients are, are, are treating more uh, um, uh, intermediate or higher risk proceedings. As we can see here in this series of 1,000 patients with a median follow-up of uh, three years from the UK, 80% of the patients or, or had uh, intermediate risk disease with glycine grade group two or higher. And you see how the Gleason 7 patients are treated now, how it's increasing. Patients with T2 uh, disease are also increasing. And how patients with Gleason 6 uh, and T1 are actually decreasing over the time. Um, this is an, an, another series from uh, Canada you know, with 150 patients, with 90% uh, of them being at least grade, grade group 2, that means intermediate risk uh, or higher. Um, in a median follow-up of, of two months, 25% uh, of the patients required uh, a salvage treatment, but most of them underwent repeat HIFU, which is a characteristic of uh, ablation therapies. And um, therefore, 81% of the patients avoided radical treatment in two years. Continence and potency were excellent, 95% and, and 87% respectively. Now, what we are talking is a series of 600 patients undergoing um, HIFU is a multi-century study from the United, United Kingdom uh, in a, a registry, in a prospective registry. And here, treating patients with uh, low intermediate and high risk, uh, indeed, 85% of the patients were intermediate or high risk prostate cancer. And the, their endpoint was basically uh, radical or systemic therapy survival. And what they found in a medium follow up of five years was the uh, failure free survival, the five year failure free survival was 80% for the overall cohort, 96 for low risk, 88 for intermediate, and 84 for high risk. These results are quite encouraging. And uh, these patients that were, they were treated here within this cohort are similar patients that we apply or we treat for prostatectomy or radiation therapy. Uh, again, complication profile is low, fistula is red, two in, 200 and two in 625, and continence rate is achieving 98% of the patients. In the U.S., HIFU was cleared by the FDA in November of 2015. Since then, HIFU has been applied for prostate cancer ablation. However, reports of focal HIFU performed in the U.S. were, lack, were, were absent, didn't exist, until this month, um, where we published uh, our first series on um, focal therapy uh, as primary treatment uh, using HIFU. In 100 patients, uh, patients underwent hem gland high ablation as primary treatment for prostate cancer. And as you can see, 72% of the patients had intermediate risk or higher. Uh, and the two years radical treatment free survival for our cohort was 91%. Again, these results are encouraging. They are according to the literature. So now we have data from uh, several countries, including data from US. Um, complication profile is low, 13% of the patients had complication, and they were all minor complications. There were no major or severe complications. There were no rectal fistulas and no patient died. Again, continency was achieved in 100% of the patients. There was not a single patient using PED. Potency was, was kept as the same. You will see they score the patient's reported outcomes a prior uh, um, uh, to high food and post high food, there is no change. And uh, actually, urinary symptoms improved. This is another series from the US. 
again showing that the bowel section and urinary function of patients undergoing uh, focal therapy with HIFU are excellent. Uh, how about focal therapy for low-risk prostate cancer? All those, this is very controversial. If patients uh, that are candidate for active surveillance should be indeed treated um, uh, with focal therapy or not, but these are the data. So this manuscript is a randomized trial that randomized 200 patients for active surveillance versus focal therapy. And what they found was the progression uh, on focal therapy was lower than patients on, on, the, on active surveillance, progression of prostate cancer, and negative biopsy was higher patients undergoing focal therapy versus patients on active surveillance. Uh, they actually follow up these patients for longer. Now we have a key reporting of five years follow up. And what, is, what we can see is that patients uh, on focal therapy, they have lower conversion to radical treatment as, as when compared to patients. Uh, that stayed on active surveillance. Uh, sexual function, erectile function, and urinary symptoms are the same for uh, focal therapy or active surveillance. There is no difference. Um, uh, we also analyzed this in our cohort of four patients undergoing focal cryoablation versus active surveillance in 220 consecutive patients. And uh, what we found was that patients on focal, uh, that underwent focal cryoablation, they had uh, higher uh, pathological progression-free survival, so they, they uh, survive better, and they have less conversion to radical treatment. As we can see, radical treatment-free survival was also higher for patients undergoing focal uh, cryoablation in comparison to those on uh, uh, active surveillance. And what if it fails? So uh, definitely focal therapy can fail. And what we can see here in this manuscript recently published is that um, when we compare uh, outcomes of salvage radical prostatectomy for patients undergoing focal therapy versus radiation, what we see is focal therapy patients have less complications, they have higher continence rate, potency is the same, but biochemical failure is in favor of patients undergoing uh, that underwent radiation therapy. With this, I will conclude that HIFU and focal therapy overall is evolving. It's safe and feasible. It provides excellent functional outcomes in quality of life. Um, it provides adequate cancer control. Larger and multi-centric cohorts are presented now uh, with longer follow-up. And uh, it's controversial if we should apply this for low or, or high risk disease. And it looks like patients with intermediate risk prostate cancer would be the most suitable for focal therapy. With this, again, I thank you very much for the opportunity. These are my contacts and I'm um, happy and uh, available to answer any questions you might have. Thank you.